The Chosen One's Journey by Dragon Wolf 12 As Ash and friends pulled over the crest of the last hill, Ash stopped and took in a deep breath. <sighs> There's no place like home, he commented, stretching his arms out and taking in the vision that was Pallet Town. So, this is Pallet? Brock asked as he gazed over the little town. Yep, Ash said. And do you see that building at the top of the hill? With the red roof and the windmill? That's the professor's laboratory. Yeah, mom's probably at the restaurant right now, so we can go see her later, Ash said. They made their way through the small town in relative silence. Occasionally, Ash would stop and say hello to one of his neighbors. Finally, they reached the bottom of the hill and made their way up the steps to the oak lab. As they walked up, Ash pulled out his Pokédex and transferred all of his Pokémon directly to the lab. A few moments later, he felt them being released into the professor's garden and meeting up with the rest of his team. Ash knocked on the door and waited. After a moment, he could hear the professor's voice shouting for them to come in. Pushing the door open, Ash walked in, followed by his friends. Professor Oak! It's me, Ash! Ah, what a surprise! Oak said, walking up to them. Oh my, is that a Togepi? He leaned forward to get a good look at Misty's little egg Pokemon. It certainly is, Professor, Misty said happily as Togepi trilled in her arms. I wanted to thank you again for giving me that Pokedex. Ah, think nothing of it, my dear, the Professor said as he led them down the hall to his sitting room. It just so happens that you're not the only Pokemon trainers to stop by today. They walked in to see Gary sitting on one of the couches, drinking a cup of tea. He looked up to see Ash entering the room, and a smirk made its way to his face. Ashy boy, he greeted. It's nice to see you finally made it. I was beginning to think you wouldn't make it. Yeah, well, not all of us have fancy sports cars to chauffeur us around to all the gyms, Ash said. Then he smirked and said, You're not compensating for anything, are you? Gary's eyes narrowed as a light blush appeared on his face. No, he said angrily. You'd better remember our deal. I want to take you down myself. Oh, don't worry, Ash replied. I don't plan on losing any of my matches. Now, now, why can't Pallet's two top Pokemon trainers get along? Oak said, trying to diffuse the tension. Top trainers? Both Ash and Gary said at the same time. That's right, the professor said proudly. The other two trainers that left at the same time as you two just couldn't take it. You are the only trainers to have earned all the badges you need to compete. Gary earned ten badges, while Ash earned eight. Ash! A familiar voice shouted, and Ash suddenly found himself with an armful of brown fluff. Hey, Evie! How are you doing? Ash asked, chuckling as Evie wriggled in his arms. Hey, kid, what's up? Pikachu also asked from Ash's shoulder. I'm doing great, he said happily, but I'm really bored. Can I battle at the league, please? Ash laughed internally. Of course you can. It's still a ways away, though, so we have plenty of time to get some training done. I'll be staying here until it's time to leave. Yay! He cheered before running off. Was that an Eevee? Gary asked, stunned. Yeah, Ash said. I caught him at the Safari Zone. Well, he certainly is an energetic Pokemon, Oak said, chuckling. He then stood up and went to his computer. Gary, Ash, may I see your Pokedexes? He asked. Sure, Gramps, Gary said. Both he and Ash pulled out their Pokedexes and handed them to Oak. He slid them into a computer and began scanning them. Very interesting, he commented as he read the data on the screen. What? Misty asked, interested. Well, according to this information, Gary has seen 60 different Pokemon, while Ash has seen over 150, he explained. Ash merely nodded while Gary's sweat dropped. Gary, however, has captured more than 10 times as many as Ash has, he finished. Gary got a cocky smile on his face while Ash's eyes widened. He glanced at Gary incredulously. Why would he need to capture so many, he wondered. Compensating? Blastoise suggested, mimicking Ash's earlier statement. Ash's eyes widened, and he did his best not to laugh. Pikachu didn't even bother, and started giggling so hard that he fell off Ash's shoulder. Ash caught him in midair and held on to him. What's up with your Pikachu? Gary asked. Ash shrugged. No clue, he said, while winking at Brock and Misty. I have an idea, Grandpa, 
Gary said, deciding to ignore the weird electric type. Let's go to your lab and show him all the Pokemon I caught. He turned to Ash with a cocky smirk on his face. That way you can learn how a real Pokemon trainer does things. Ash rolled his eyes. That's a good idea, the professor easily agreed. Let's poke around in my laboratory. Is he serious? Gyarados asked. Even I knew that pun was lame, Blastoise said. He's an old geezer, Scyther said. They're weird like that. He reminds me of the old Alpha from my pack, Growlithe commented. Ash smirked at his Pokemon's comments before following the professor deeper into the building. They came upon a room with steel automatic doors. Oak typed a password into the keypad next to the door and it slid open. Inside was a massive room filled with endless metal shelves of Pokeballs. Well, here we are, said Oak, spreading his arms in welcome. This is where all of Palatown's trainer's Pokeballs are kept. Wow, Ash said, looking around. His aura spread through the room, sensing hundreds of thousands of life signatures. Oak walked up to a particular shelf that held 18 Pokeballs on it. These are the Pokeballs I received from Ash. Ash smirked as he recognized his Pokeballs, from Nidoking's Moonball to Absol's Premier Ball. If I remember right, Ash has captured only about 18 Pokemon in total. Oak continued. 19, Ash corrected. Well, yes, Oak conceded. But I wasn't counting Pikachu since I gave him to you. Ash nodded while Gary snorted. On the other hand, Gary has captured over 200, Oak finished. Gary wore a proud smirk on his face. Training isn't just about capturing Pokemon, Ash said. I may not have a lot of Pokemon, but my team is very diverse and well-trained. The only Pokemon types I'm missing are Ice and Rock types, and since my team is so small, I can spend more time training each of my Pokemon. Professor Oak nodded. Very good, Ash. Your training style, while completely opposite Gary's, can be just as effective, if not more so, if you do it right. I'm very impressed with how both of you have grown, and I look forward to seeing you in the Pokemon League. Thank you, Professor Oak, Ash said, bowing. Yeah, thanks, Gramps, Gary said. Professor Oak, when is the Pokemon League being held this year? Misty asked. Ah, yes, Oak said. I assume you both know where it is? He asked Ash and Gary. Of course, Gary said. On the Indigo Plateau, Ash said. Very good, Oak said. The conference is set to begin in exactly two months' time, so I suggest you start training. I will, Professor, Ash said. This seems to be an awful lot of work, Brock commented. How do you keep up with it all? It's actually not as hard as you'd think, Brock, Oak said. Every morning when I wake up, I come to perform a check on all the Pokemon. Once that's finished, I set up an automatic release program that sends all of the Pokemon in these Pokeballs onto the ranch. He let them out of the main building and to the backyard. That is, if 20 acres of nothing but green grass and trees filled with Pokemon could be called a backyard. I have a team of Pokemon breeders working here with me in charge of feeding the Pokemon and ensuring they're in the best of health. While they're doing that, I begin my research. For example, I've recently been studying the variations between different Pokemon of the same species. It's very interesting. Once the breeders have finished feeding the Pokemon their dinner, I activate a recall system that brings all the Pokemon back to their balls for the night. You must get to learn a lot. Ash commented as they walked around. Yes, he agreed. Living here certainly gives me a unique opportunity to research and communicate with lots of different Pokemon. Just then, a silver floating Pokemon came up to the group. Hey, Matang, what's up? Ash said as he went to pet his Iron Claw Pokemon. What is that? Gary asked. He pulled out his Pokedex and trained it on Matang. Pokemon unknown. No information available. Ash frowned as he sensed a wave of fear pass over Gary. Ash especially has given me quite a few rare opportunities to study unusual Pokemon, Oak said. You seem to have a perchant for capturing unusual Pokemon. Ash smiled. Thank you, Professor, he said. As Matang floated away, Brock turned to Oak. Well, Professor, this place is really great. The Pokemon must love it here, the breeder said. I certainly hope so, Brock, he replied. I designed this place so I could study Pokemon the proper way, in their natural habitats, living free. When Pokemon live in an environment similar to the one they were born in, it's easier to see how they are affected by their individual trainers.